Hello, welcome to Edge CGI. My name is Jason Alt. This is part one of a five part tutorial series. In parts one and two of this tutorial, we will focus on modeling. In part three, we will do the UVW unwrapping. In part four, we will apply some basic materials, some lighting, and do the render to texture process. And then finally, in part five, we will put all of the textures together in Photoshop and apply them to our model. Now, what you see here is kind of what we're going for uh, for the treasure chest. Now, this isn't the final textures. Uh, that's something we'll be working on. But this is something that I had mocked up um, because uh, I want you guys to start off by collecting reference. So this is the reference that I'd uh, kind of come up with. Feel free to screen cap this or whatever to use this as your reference. Um, but it's very important, and I can't stress enough how important it is to use uh, reference when you're making anything. Um, so this is basically what we're going to be creating in this tutorial series. So I'm going to hop back over to Max and we'll get started with a brand new scene. I'll turn my grid back on here. All right. So for the first part of starting this, um, what I want you guys to do is we're going to go over the box and we're going to create a box. Uh, now the treasure chest that I had created, is a little bit wider uh, than it is uh, tall or uh, it's got a larger length than it does a width. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in some numbers here. Feel free to use those. So the length that I'm going to use, which this is my length, uh, I'm just going to type in 40. My width, I'm going to type in 50. So again, it's a little bit wider. And then I'm going to go ahead and go with 40 again. And so this is going to give me a, uh, a treasure chest that is uh, mostly square on the sides. You know, I might bring this down just a little bit. Let's go 35. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Um, and the segments that I have here, uh, right now these are 3 by 3 by 3 uh, I am going to change that so the, um, the segments are going to be uh, 3 wide here. So this is going to give me... Uh, basically my wood um, pieces that are going to be in the front like we saw in my reference and then uh, this will be kind of the same idea for the side um, and then the top part of, the, of this we're going to end up uh, creating after here so uh, once we have that and we have those settings and just in case you didn't see those under modify we can see those again length segments is three width is one height is three um, and again that's just to give us the uh, topology we need for creating the boards so I'm going to right click and I'm going to come down to, you'll probably see convert to and then a drop down. I always end up converting to editable poly. So I've just made this the default in my software to make things faster for me. I'm going to go to edge mode and I'm going to double click on one of the edges here. And when I double click on that, it's going to select what's called an edge loop. So that means that the edges we have here go all the way around and they meet back here. I'm going to hold control so I can add to my selection. I'm going to double click again. And I'm going to go to scale. Now the way scale works uh, and the way we're going to use it here is based on my pivot point, I need to go from the center of my selection. So that's that icon there. So that'll allow me to scale these out in the same direction. Uh, so somewhere about there. And that's going to let me make these boards uh, come out. So I'm going to delete the polygons that are on the top of here. So I'll delete that. And I'm going to create another object that I'm going to add to this. So I'm going to create a cylinder. And this is just kind of going to show you how we can um, add different objects together, these different primitive objects, uh, and combine them together to create something. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just drag this out and up. Now my width on that was 50, so I need my height on this cylinder to be 50. Uh, I don't want to have any height segments here because I don't have any height segments on this part of my uh, treasure chest. And the sides, I'm going to use 12. And the reason I'm using 12 is because I want to have six boards that run along the top here. And I'm going to end up cutting this in half, so I need 12. Uh, and the radius should be the radius that was here, which should be 20. Because radius is going to be, you know, the diameter is 40. So my radius is 20. 
So I'm going to right click and convert this also to an editable poly. And I'm going to go ahead and delete these top and bottom uh, caps here. And I'm going to delete the bottom half, which this will be the bottom half of the cylinder there. And then I'm going to take this last part here and I'm going to rotate this, but I want to rotate it in a way that um, goes from the center point. So I'm going to go over to my hierarchy panel and go to effect pivot point only and say center to object. So it's going to center that. I'm going to turn that back off and go to rotate. And I'm going to make sure my angle snap toggle is turned on. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to go to move. And these little up and down arrows on the side of here are called spinners. So if you hear me refer to spinners, that's what those are. I'm going to right click on them. Anytime you right click in max uh, on a spinner, it resets their value to zero, zero, and zero. And I'm going to make sure my treasure chest is also zero, zero, and zero. And I'm doing that so these objects will line right up. So this is going to let me put these two pieces together here. So I'm going to go back to the main part here. And I'm going to go to attach. I'm going to click on the lid. And that's going to attach those objects together. Now something we need to do is we need to weld the seam here. So I'm going to go into element mode, which will allow me to select the individual parts of my object here. So the entire object is box 001. Element mode allows me to select the individual parts of that. So I'm going to go ahead and select this element and just move this down to where these line up a little better. And I'm going to go into border mode. And uh, something else that I want to show you guys is if we right click and go to object properties, we can go and turn on back face cull, which is going to stop drawing these inside sections, which are the back face. So it allows us to see that our polygons are indeed facing the right direction and it keeps us from seeing the inside there. So I'm going to go into border mode and border allows me to select any edges that are not attached to other polygons, so they're open edges. So I'm going to select those and these ones. And I'm going to hold control and click vertex, which will convert my uh, border selection to vertex. And I'm only doing that to make sure that I select uh, all the parts around here. So I'm going to go to weld settings and it's going to bring up this little prompt. Now notice before there was a line here. Whenever we weld, it's going to weld these based off of this very kind of small proximity, 0 0.1 units. Um, and that line goes away. That does let me know that this has been welded uh, on this side and on that side. So I'm going to hit the check mark here just to finish out that tool. So now the next part is uh, I need to take these sides here and I go to the other side here. Now I'm holding uh, control whenever I select these. And that just allows me to add to my selection. Oh, accidentally selected another part here. So I'm going to hold Alt and click that to deselect. So luckily I messed up just so I could show you that. We'll pretend I did that on purpose though. So I'm going to go to scale and again I'm going to do this this time from use pivot point center. So that's based on the individual parts that I've selected. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to scale these down. And what I'm looking to do is scale them down where they pretty much, uh, by the way, uh, I'm holding shift while I scale. So that allows me to extrude out new polygons in case you're not familiar with that. I'm going to go to move and I'm just going to, whoops. I'm just going to drag these down. And it looks like I went a little too far here. So what we're just going to do is I'm going to scale these in a little bit based on center selection just to line them up just to make that easy, make that nice and clean looking. All right, so now I'm going to weld those again. So I'm going to just hit Control A, which will allow me to select any border edges. I'll hold Control and click Vertex again to convert and weld, which will allow me to weld these. Now I can see before I had 
56 vertices and after I had 52. And I wanted to weld these corners, which would be four ver um, vertices. So we know that that's worked correctly. Okay, so for the next part here, uh, I'm going to do something called Swift Loop. So I'm going to drop down my menu here. And I'm going to go to Swift Loop. So Swift Loop allows me to uh, slice in uh, an edge loop somewhere. And I'm going to slice in right here in the center. I'm going to get it as close as I can get it. And I click, it creates a row of edges through there. Now, I like to get things kind of perfect. So I want to make sure that this is set up at zero. And there we go. That's all I have to do is type in zero there. Or I could have right clicked again. Now the reason I do that is because I'm going to bridge edges from here over to here. Now typically when I'm modeling, I want to try as much as possible to keep four-sided shapes. Um, it's just a good habit to get into. So I'm going to say bridge. Now I can't bridge right now with one segment because it bridges all the way across and I don't have anything to weld there. So I'm going to type in two and check. And I just want to check something real quick to see if it's welded these points together. And you can see that it hasn't. So I'm just going to select that and say weld. And this time you can tell I didn't do settings. I just clicked on weld. That's because I knew I only had those parts selected. I'm also going to go in and say target weld, which will allow me to select a vertex that I want to weld to another vertex. And I get this dotted line that comes out. And hopefully you can see that, but it allows me to weld that up. Now I'll do the other side here. I'm going to bridge once again these two and bridge them to these two. Bridge. Now this time I only clicked bridge. That's because the settings were already set up for two and I knew that. So if I've already used the tool, I can go ahead and do that to save myself, uh, you know, from going into the settings. I know I need to weld this. So I'll just click weld and then target weld to weld the top part. Okay, so we're moving right along here. Moving along pretty good. Okay, so the next part. Uh, I want to get the individual boards here. Now if we go back to our reference and look, we can see that I've kind of extruded out these individual boards. It gives me a little bit of depth here to the model. So we're going to do the same thing. So the way we do this, and a very easy way to do it, is I'm going to go through and select all of these polygons. And actually, I'll show you something else. If I select one and I hold shift and I select the next one, it's going to select all the ones that follow uh, parallel based on these uh, edge rings. That's what they're called when they run uh, parallel to one another. And it's going to select all of them all the way around, which is really handy. And then I can just hold alt and deselect these. And then I'm going to use extrude. Actually, no. Yeah, we'll use extrude. Now, if I extrude this way, they all extrude together as like one board, um, which I don't want. I want these to look individual. So I'm going to drop this down from group and change it to by polygon. And I'm going to go with a depth here that you know feels you know as far out as I really want to take this. So we'll go out to about that far. And when we're done, we just hit check. So now I'm able to go in and kind of individually pull some of these out away from the other ones, which is kind of fun. So I'll do that with all of these. Pull these ones back in. And so I'm just kind of randomly going around and pulling some out and some in. I'm trying to leave the ones at the bottom a little further out than the rest of them. So, do kind of the same idea here. It just helps with this, making it feel more like, you know, it's made out of individual parts rather than um, a whole piece. Uh, that's pretty good. All right, so some of the other stuff that I can do is I can go through here and start grabbing some of these edges 
pull them up a little bit, pull some of them down. And that kind of just helps these look like they're, again, not just extruded straight out, because that's not as exciting. And so we'll just change some of these. That also helps with another part here. So these ones you can see, if I try to move them down, see how they kind of slant this piece of wood down and in a little bit? If we want to avoid something like that, we can use these constraints so over here where it says constraint edge. And by the way, if you see the two panels I have here, that just means that I took this and drug it out so I can see more stuff at any given time. But if I go to edge and I move these, now they move and they follow the edges that are already existing which kind of helps keep the things nice and tidy, which I like. It's kind of, kind of weird about that sort of stuff. I like things to, you know, be a little bit disorganized, but I don't want them to get too crazy. Feel free to go as far as you want with that. It's just my own personal preference on this. So I'll just kind of move those away. So you guys get the idea there. We'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to go about this a little faster. Just grab some of those. Move them down together. Mostly I'm trying to move the ones that are really close here which will make a lot more sense whenever we start doing our UVW unwrap, which I'll explain that more in the next video. And let's move these ones away a little bit. All right. Yeah, pull that one up too. All right, that's pretty good. That concludes this part of the tutorial. Please stay tuned for the rest of the series. Thanks for watching Edge CGI and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share if you've enjoyed this tutorial. And thanks for watching.